Hi everyone, welcome back to another Ethan Journal video. So if you missed it, Apple just had their spring event, which was really cool, as you can see. And I'm on their website right now, and you'll notice that there's a brand new iMac model, as well as some other really cool things that they just launched. So I'm going to kind of go over some of the things that they did, and my opinion on what they are. So... As you can see, the first thing we're going to talk about is the brand new iMac. Now, I'm a big user of the iMac as such. Um, just a f Actually, yesterday, my Mac Mini came in, which is now my current computer. But I've always used an iMac. And as you can see here, they just released the brand new iMac with the rumored brand new design. Now, it's not this, it's really close to a lot of the designs that people thought it was going to be, yet in its own way, it is different. And as you can see, they have almost like, I think it's like three different models here, and they have quite a few colors for each. Now, that's the funny thing is like on the first iMac the original one that came out like 1998 that one had multiple colors so it's nice to see Apple bringing that back so looking at the different models as you can see they're still based on Apple's M1 CPU architecture and I don't see that changing anytime soon as they just released the CPU model and I expect that to stay the same until around maybe the end of this year but looking at it, it's quite a pretty cool design. I mean, I'm just going to select this one here. As you can see, it looks really cool. Um, looking at the colors that it has, and then all of the different... I, th I wonder if that's a background that comes pre-installed on each of them. But looking at how thin they are is just crazy. And the fact that they also have Apple's 8-core CPU and 8-core GPU of the M M1 chip. Also the base model having the 7-core GPU. Um, it's quite cool to see what Apple's done with these brand new computers. Now, the only thing that I'm not fond of is the fact that there aren't many USB-A ports. Now, yes, I know Apple's been trying to make um, companies transition over to USB-C and Thunderbolt for the past few years, as the MacBooks have had just USB-C and Thunderbolt on them for quite a while now. But the fact that they only have on the um, base model one here only two Thunderbolt ports and no USB-A ports, in my opinion, isn't great. At least they let you still get some on the newer ones. I'm sorry, on the, on the more upgraded ones. It's just still the fact is that people still use USB-A. I mean, even Apple's keyboards, if you have an older one, still use USB-A. If you're just trying to get into, like, streaming, then um, stream decks only use USB-A and stuff like that. And USB-C is coming up on their highs and more and more devices are using it. It's just not there yet. And I know Apple's always been that company to push things forward as fast as possible, like with the iPhones removing the headphone jack and such like that, and transitioning to not using USB-C on their iPhones and still using um, Lightning. It's kind of like Apple's thing to always go to the next best thing right away and push it in your face as hard as they can until the rest of the market switches over to their set standard. And that's the thing I, I foresee staying in Apple's thing for quite a while now. And with the new iMac, to be honest, I like it. And it's pretty much the same as the other iMacs, but except for the design. I mean, on the inside, as you can see, it's super thin, and it's brought this brand new design. Now, I'm not... I really do like what they've done by having the bezel how it is, except still that bottom part there, I'm pretty sure they could have removed that. Now, on their demonstration, they on their video, they did show how the speakers are located there, but still, Apple, I mean, I think you could do better, <laughs> but still, I guess this is their first M1 iMac, and we can't expect much from it yet. So now let's move on to iPad. Now Apple just released this brand new iPad Pro with their M1 CPU, which is kind of funny. The fact that they put an M1 CPU inside of an iPad is just crazy. I mean, it's a desktop chip, but I guess with its power efficiency, it can work as a decent iPad chip. And the fact that it's going to bring you the experience of the um, M1 CPU to an iPad, a portable device, more portable than like a MacBook or a MacBook Air, is just crazy. And I, to be honest, I don't think they're going wrong when they do that. I mean, Apple's A series of chips are still powerful, coming in around the same gigahertz speed as the M1 CPU, except the M1 CPU takes a step further with that neural engine and other things with power efficiency and performance. I don't think it's changed that much. I mean, it definitely looks quite cool. Um, and it still is kind of the same iPad, iPad Pro we've known for a few years now. But the fact that it has two terabytes of storage now is crazy. Um, because that's about this maximum storage you can get on a normal um, Mac at this point. And the fact is, like, how would you install two terabytes worth of apps 
But I guess if you're doing professional work like editing in Lightroom and stuff like that, going on trips, doing HDR footage, two terabytes is going to come in handy. But the fact that it costs two thousand dollars is quite crazy um but otherwise yeah i think the ipad pro is going in the right direction with the m1 cpu now again this is only my opinion many other reviewers are going to come out with their videos very soon about the m1 cpu but in my opinion i think they did a really good job with it and the fact that they still kept that lidar sensor i think lidar is going to be good, really good for things like um AR games and even like they showed like they want to create the thing where it can detect faces and only detect that face and make it better for recording to be honest I think someday maybe an iPhone and iPad can be used for professional movies that'd be really cool as well as allowing you to use the Thunderbolt on it yes the iPad Pro now has the Thunderbolt connector which I thought was really cool because Thunderbolt is quite fast it brings all of that amazing versatility with USB-C as well as allowing it to be even faster connect more devices like they um, said their Pro Display XTR which is also quite cool and I'm glad they still kept the charger with an iPad I mean I know they removed it from the iPhone don't do that app. don't remove it from the iPad Apple it needs to stay there and I guess one of the last few things is the fact that they introduced AirTags. Now, I believe AirTags would be under iPhone. Yep. Now, AirTags have been rumored for quite a while now. I mean, I remember in iOS 13, there was a bug where if you went into Find My Setting, it would actually show, Find Your AirTags will show up. They removed that in iOS 14, but now it's probably back as, well, they introduced AirTags. And the fact that they only cost 30 bucks is crazy. Now, that is cheap, but for the versatility that they have and the fact that they... Um, have their design. I think it's a bit overpriced for their product, but again, this is Apple's first version of the AirTag, and I think I think the AirTag is quite a good thing. I mean, for people that lose things, um, like me, I will misplace things all the time. It'll come in handy for people like me and many other people as well, as being able to ping your device, having it beep, having your phone direct you to exactly where it is, is quite nice. And especially being able to find your keys if you have, you can attach these to like your keys or your wallet, and you'll be able to find them. And I think that like a four pack for 99 bucks isn't bad, but still I do think it's a bit overpriced for what it is. But the fact that you can add an engraving is pretty cool. Like, you can have a smiley face emoji and stuff like that, and then you can have your own custom um, AirTag for the same price, which is also really cool. And then, finally, comes Apple's new Apple TV. Now, I've always had an Apple TV. I don't have the newest one. I have an Apple TV second generation. But I think Apple TV is actually quite good. It's competing with things like the Amazon Fire TV and the Roku stick and stuff like that. And the fact I the operating system has got has come a long way from what it used to be. I think that Apple is going a right step in the right direction by introducing all their new features. Now, when it comes to the remote, which is something they talked a lot about at the event, um, their brand new remote. To be honest, I don't know what I think about it. I kind of liked the old one a bit more than this one because, I mean, it, in my opinion, it doesn't match the actual Apple TV itself. I mean, if you look at the Apple TV here, it's completely matte black and it looks good. But the remote is like a complete invert of that. Like the Apple TV has some white on it with a lot of black while the remote has a lot of um, white on it with less black and just black for the buttons. And I mean, for most people, that might seem good, but in my opinion, I'm not a big fan of the remote. You might be, and that's fine. Um, but in my opinion, I think the old remote was better, but knowing Apple, they're not going to change it. <laughs> so I'm guessing that remote is here to stay, and we're just going to have to live with it. But to be honest, um, I'm, I'm okay with my Apple TV second generation right now. All I use it for is for AirPlay and streaming YouTube videos to my TV using AirPlay. I don't use it for all the Apple Arcade. I'm not an Apple Arcade subscriber but if i was i mean the apple tv 4k would be nice and the fact that it works with controllers is also really cool so yeah that is what i think what my opinions are on the apple event i will actually link the apple event in the description of the video below definitely check it out apple's animations have gotten super cool and it's just getting better and better every time but i can't wait for wwdc this year as that's my favorite event from apple and it's gonna be exciting to see all their brand new products and stuff like that but until then my name is Ethan. Have a great rest of your day and goodbye.